So I'm back with my Amiga. What I'm here to do is fix an Amiga floppy drive, but not the one that's in here. The one that's in here works actually. I've actually got an Amiga floppy that came out of, it was actually my Amiga from back in the day. Uh, and I've got written on it here, powers on, has errors, sounds bad. So this drive doesn't work. And I wrapped it up in here for future, uh, future use. So I've never serviced one of these before. I, I don't think there's anything actually wrong with this. It did sometimes load a game. It's made by Matsushita Communication, uh, Panasonic. But it is an original Amiga floppy drive. So hopefully it just needs a bit of lubrication maybe to get it working. Oh, there we go. Oh, that was actually a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. Oh, there's a lot of hair and stuff in there. Yeah, there's quite a lot going on in there. But I don't see anything else yet. I don't know if there's any lubrication on that part there. Oh, it is quite a bit dirty. So I suppose that's the first thing to do is clean all the gunk out. Oh God, yeah, there's a lot of, ugh. Yeah, that's not good. I think this maybe could work. I think it is just been neglected. Oh yeah, there we go. So that should, if I can just turn this and get the gunk off it. This might be the only problem, it might be. Might be just the nasty black gunk that's coming off here. I mean, this is supposed to be grease, but ugh, it's not good. Not sure if the thing to do would be just to clean the heads, put a bit of grease on there, and then just plug it back in and see what we get. So there wasn't much dirt on the heads. So I'll put a little bit of silicone oil on this worm drive thing here. I mean, there could be something electronically wrong with this. I'm not sure, but... The mechanism seems pretty good. So the job now is to open this Amiga up, stick this inside and see if we can get it working. This Amiga still looks really good after being uh, retro brighted. So it's been retro brighted a while ago in one of, in a previous video. Still looks pretty good. There we go. So I'm just going to plug this other one straight in over the top and we'll see what kind of a disaster it is. It didn't do anything. That's doing nothing. Hmm, maybe it's died. Well, it didn't used to do that. It actually used to do stuff. So this has actually got worse. I mean, before it used to be bad, um, but now it's actually just not even booting. So maybe it has to be disassembled further to see what's going on in here. I mean, it's got like a really crusty looking. Do we disassemble even further? That's the question. And if I did, how do I get into this thing? Nothing. Oh. Not nothing. What's going on? Why is it working now? Right, there you go, I can hear it. Well, why didn't it work before? That's really odd. Right, here we go, let's see if we can boot. Actually, I'm not gonna put my Toki disc in because I think this may, this has possibly trashed a drive in the past. So I'm not going to put an original disc in. I'm going to put the Amiga test kit disc in and see if it can boot that. I think the answer might be no. Well, it was definitely making a noise. Wow, it's just got worse. Try again. All right, definitely had a sign of life before and now it doesn't. Why did it just come to life for a second and then die? Well, there was a sign of life. That said sign of life has gone now. Maybe it does have problems with the electronics and it's not actually a mechanical problem. 
Right, so I probably need to spend some time disassembling this slightly further to see if I can access anything in here and find out why this thing just does nothing. It's weird that it's dead. I mean, I'm seeing some a capacitor there, surface mount one. If they're as dodgy as the ones in the Amiga, they would be failing as well. There's only one though that I can see. I mean, one might be enough. Oh yeah, there is some gunk on the board. Hmm, so maybe it could have a failed capacitor on there, I don't know. There's a capacitor there that's got some gunk on it. So that could have gone. Don't know what that would do. Okay, so I managed to do a bit more disassembly on this drive. I managed to get this top plate off, but it was actually quite tricky just working out how to do this. It actually turns out you've got to push this part in. And when that happens, this part will actually flip up and it allows it to get out of these rails that are on here. I did also unplug the heads and this looks like the zero reset sensor and the motor just so I could get this part off on the back. And there we go. And it turns out it's actually soldered on down there. So I'm not gonna actually take that any further. There is one electrolytic cap on there, but it looks all right. So I don't think there's anything to do on here. So that looks all right. I need to put that back on and plug all these things back in. Um, the thing that does look dodgy though is this electrolytic cap here that does look like it has leaked onto the board. And I think this could be the problem. So um, I fancy replacing this one to see if I can get this thing to work. I can also get in here a bit better and actually start cleaning some more of this gunk off. And I can also oil these rails while I'm in here. So yeah, so that's the cap down there. And you can see all this stuff down here that does look like it's leaked onto the board a bit. I think that cap could be the problem. So I should be able to replace that with just a standard electrolytic cap, I think. And maybe that'll fix the problem. This uh, drive motor here does seem to spin quite freely. So that seems to be all right. It doesn't appear to be like stuck on anything or anything like that. These switches I know can be a problem. These are the ones that sense whether there's, a, there's an actual disc in and whether there's a uh, right protect on it. So they can be a problem, but I'm hoping they're gonna work. I'm not sure. I'll try and get some contact cleaner in there if not. So I'll probably be able to replace this with this little cap. I'll be able to sit in here somewhere like that. I should be able to get that fitting in there. There is quite a lot of clearance between the disc and this cap. Um, so maybe you could get it on its end, but it's probably not worth the risk. I think it'll just fit there quite nicely. So I've just put some uh, cheap heat resistant tape around this cap. And I'm gonna try and use hot air to get it off. So I've got the hot air station here. Set it to 350 maybe. Right, just wait for this to heat up. Just give it a little pre-warm. Come on. Right. Yeah, that's definitely leaked. So there it is. Doesn't look like I've done any damage to it. I think, let's have a look. So yeah, I think all the other components around it are intact, which is good. So I'll just clean that crap off the board. Uh, I need to get the residual solder off here as well. Yeah, so I'll just put a dab of new solder on, on these pads. <sighs> So it should be able to fit, yeah, it should be able to fit that cap in there. So yeah, somewhere in here will do fine, I think. So it's just gonna have to sit on top of those other components there. And hopefully, just bend that over there. I think that can just sit there like that. I think that is out of the way, hopefully it is. If not, I've screwed up. So this, a little bit of silicone oil, and I'm just gonna dab it onto some of these bits where the runners are. I'm just gonna do it with a cotton bud so it doesn't go everywhere. Hopefully this will work. So just need to put a bit in there, a bit in there, a 
bit in there. Some in there. And that one. Now I need to assemble this top part again. And these were like these little wheels. They're not really wheels, they're more like runners that fell out. So I think what I've got to do, stick this on here, stick this one on here, like that. And this has got to kind of like feed under this. Oh God, this is all gonna go wrong. Ah, there we go. Right, so that bit's in there. And then I just put these front ones on. Yeah, this, the secret is pushing this in to get this top bit out. And I've got to push this in to get that in there. And then that should be back. Right, so we're back, except we've got a new cap in there. Just got to reconnect everything up now, which I kind of regret that I actually took all this stuff out, but that's what I did. Just trying to get this thing working. Right, this could take a while, so I'll stop the camera and I'll get these in. I bet I'm gonna be here for about half an hour doing this. I have put the drive back together. Putting these little connectors back in is a real pain, so don't unplug them unless you really need to. In fact, that one and that one were all right, but these two here, really hard to get back in. Let's turn this off. And let's just plug this drive in instead. So hopefully I didn't put the cap in backwards. Let's see if we get anything better this time. Oh, it's doing something. Yeah, it's doing something and it didn't do that before. So maybe that cap was our problem. Let's see if it can boot this. Oh, it's spinning now. It didn't spin before. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> no, that is not good. No, it can't read it. It's getting a red screen. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Hmm, that's disappointing though, because it is getting further and it's definitely spinning the drive now, which it didn't do before. So that cap has definitely gone bad. You could see that it, it had leaked and left something on the board. Let's give it one more go. Let's try this disc. It's actually got Turrican 2 on it. Oh, it's actually read something. Is it going to work? It's worked. Unbelievable. It's back to life. Well, I wonder why it wouldn't boot this Amiga test kit. I mean, maybe it's not fully functional. Like it couldn't boot this, but it's booting Turrican disc. Well, that is, well, I'm gonna call it a win, even if it's not fully working. But yeah, so one bad cap, is that what did it? Oh yeah, this is totally working. And. I am totally dying already. I'm <laughs> totally dead in the first two seconds. Unbelievable. I'm too excited to play. <laughs> well, yeah, so back from the dead. Absolutely back from the dead. Let me try the test kit again and see if that will see if that will work. Sorry, Turrican, but you have to go. Come on, test kit, you can do it. We did oh No, it doesn't boot that disc though, so it's not quite right. There's something wrong, but for some reason it boots Turrican. So yeah, it's not 100%, This it's a bit dodgy. What else have I got on it? I think I've got a workbench disc here. Let's try that. Weird that it managed to boot Turrican.
Well, so far it's booting it. Got a lot. I've got a huge RAM disk here. I could try and copy everything off this disk. In fact, can I just drag the workbench disk onto the RAM disk? Does that work? Yeah, so it's managed to copy that whole disk into the RAM disk. Yeah, this is totally working. Here we go, Mega test kit in the normal drive. Because this disk might be bad now. I suspect not. Ah, that's odd, so that one will boot it straight away. Yeah, this one boots it and this one won't. So it's still got problems, but it's certainly a bit better. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Um, I'm not going to call this fully functional yet, but it's certainly better than it was. It couldn't boot anything before. Um, in fact, it used to sound bad and behave badly, and I think it wiped a disk. But now it's just back to working, but can't boot everything. So there's clearly something wrong with it, but I don't know what it is. So yeah, I'm going to call that a win for now. I might not put this back in the other media yet. I might do some more investigation. But there it is, a slightly fixed um, Amiga floppy drive and if you've got one of these I've got the what's the number yeah so if you've got one of these I suggest replacing that cap um, because it's probably gone by now because it's 30 years old the trick to getting this top part off is to push this part in and then this this little like pop up and you'll be able to get that off then because uh, that was the most confusing bit and don't bother taking this board off on the back because it's just going to cost you time and doesn't do anything so there it is. So a slight fix, a slightly better floppy drive, but still not perfect. So there you go. So I actually booted the Amiga test kit from the internal drive and then I actually just plugged in this drive <clears throat> while it was on. And I'm doing the retest in Amiga test kit. And you can see that it's failed to read some blocks off that disk. So I don't know why. Oh, it's failed to read quite a few, actually. So there you go. So it's not great. <laughs> it's not great. It's better, but it's not great. But for some reason, that could manage to boot the Turrican disk. Just can't seem to read this one. Hmm. There we go. So... Not great. Let's just put the Turrican disk in it and see if it can do a full read on the Turrican disk. Right, so this is the Turrican disk now. Well, look at that. So, for some reason, it can fully read this Turrican disk, but it can't read the Amiga test kit disk. And I assume that the workbench one will be the same. So, yeah, I don't know what's wrong with this Amiga test kit disk, but yeah, so it's it's working, but it's not quite working. I don't understand that. Maybe that disk is bad, but good enough to read in another drive. I'm not sure. So there you go. So kind of working.